Hey guys, what's up? So today's video is gonna be all about the topic, does natural mean sustainable? Basically, I'm referring to are all natural products better for the environment than conventional products? So if you want to know my biochemist perspective on this topic, then just keep watching. So this is my third time filming this video because I am having some major audio issues today. So I hope everything works out with this one. It seems to be better. I had a lot of feedback on my mic because I think it was touching something or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, audio tech is not my jam. <laughs> also, if you're not following me on Instagram, I suggest you do. I just made a very exciting announcement on there today. So you can follow me at Kenna Whitnell and check that out. So when I first started making skincare products when I was about 14 years old, I had this idea in my mind that all natural products, like only using plant material, was somehow more eco-friendly and better for the environment. And I held on to that belief for a very long time until I started working at the University of British Columbia. And my professor there opened my eyes up to a couple of different issues that occur in the natural health product and natural product space. So the first issue in with like sourcing natural products is unsustainable plant sourcing. And this is actually a bigger issue than I realized and I think anyone realizes is that not all plants are grown and harvested in a very sustainable way. Um, one example of this is licorice root. Essentially, they just plant big fields of licorice and then they use bulldozers to like bulldoze it up and it really depletes the soil and the soil can't be used for a very long time. In addition, you've completely depleted that plant source because you have to actually take out the root material. Another example would be like luxurious exotic um, oils, like essential oils such as sandalwood and frankincense. The trees have to be quite old to, until they produce this aromatic resin and then they're often over harvested to the point where there's one species of frankincense that is endangered and over harvesting just puts plants at risk of being endangered or potentially even extinct. The second issue that she introduced me to is plant adult or er, raw material adulteration. So I know I've spoken about adulteration before on my channel. Adulteration is basically when a pure raw material such as like an oil an essential oil or a plant extract is diluted with different things so that it increases the volume. And this happens a lot when demand is greater than supply. So these raw material suppliers feel forced to, you know, put other things in these raw materials so that they can sell more of it without having more of a supply because the demand is so high and it's higher than they could ever source. A really good example of this is olive oil. There's not enough olives actually grown every year to produce as much olive oil that is sold. Um, there's not even enough olives in the world to meet up with that demand. So most olive oil is adulterated. So this really got me thinking about natural products in a very different light in that it's not so cut and dry as they are more eco-friendly and better for the environment. And when you really start to break it down, it becomes very apparent that it, this is really not the case. So it takes a lot more resources on our planet to create all natural products. It takes a lot of land, it takes a lot of water, it takes a lot of energy, and it takes a lot of labor as well to produce all natural products. I'm going to just start by talking about the land issue because this is one that I think is very important to keep in mind. Um, we only have so much fertile land where we can grow crops and we can grow plants on this planet. And if we're using a lot of that and increasingly more of that to meet the demands of like the cosmetics and skincare industry for those types of plants, that is taking away land that could be used to grow food um, because we already know that we have an issue with food supply and with an ever-growing population, it's only going to get worse. So now I'll focus on water. As we all know, plants need water to grow, but also the processing after of plant material often involves quite a lot of water. Um, there's the washing of the plants, and then also if you're making extracts that do use water as well, that's a huge um, 
user of water resources. And finally, I just want to touch on the energy aspect of growing plants. So the biggest idea around using only plant material is that it is a very renewable resource. And I will not argue that it is um, a very renewable way to get different active ingredients and lots of different compounds that are really beneficial for the skin. But it's not like it's not using any other non-renewable resources. When you're growing plants, there's a lot of machinery involved, um, all the way from the growing of the plants to the processing to the transportation. And there is a lot of transportation involved when you are making different raw materials. Often where the plants are grown is not where they're processed. And then it can even go to further processing places depending on the different raw materials that are made from that plant source. So there's a lot of transportation involved in creating different oils, essential oils, and all the machinery that's used at each point is using oil and gas. So even though you're using, you know, a plant-based product, it used a lot of oil and gas to actually produce it. And I'm not saying that energy cannot be renewable, it definitely can, but at this current moment, where these things are going on, they're not using renewable energy resources. It's mainly using oil and gas to fuel the tractors, to fuel the machinery, and then transportation involves trains and trucks and airplanes. So where I would really like to see the industry move towards more as far as sustainable ingredient sourcing and sustainable renewable ingredients in general is a combination of natural ingredients and plant-based products Oops. <laughs> and also using microorganisms to produce a lot of different plant extracts and compounds that just are not ever going to be able to be produced in a very sustainable way. So some examples of this include like fragrance ingredients or essential oil components. Um, these can be made by genetically modifying uh, either bacteria or yeast and putting in the enzymes from the plant into those microorganisms to then produce these nature identical compounds that could go into uh, cosmetics. You can also do this for lots of different active ingredients, including like flavonoids, uh, still beans, and even like acids, like alpha hydroxy acids, for example. And if you've ever seen, you know, bacterial fermentation, it can be done in a very limited space. So it kind of looks like when you're um, at a brewery fermenting beer, it's like big uh, silver containers and you can just pump out these raw materials with very little input. They do require an input, of course. Uh, they do have to be at a certain temperature, generally 37 degrees. And then they do require like a sugar source and the most renewable source of that would be sustainably harvested cane sugar. Cane sugar can be very, very sustainable. And that does bring me to my next point. So cane, cane sugar is an example of like a multi-industry multi resource where we use it for food. Um, we can use it to create uh, renewable like plastics or bio-based plastics. And then we can also use it to fuel the microorganisms for making different cosmetic and skincare active ingredients. So I'm definitely not saying that we should only grow cane sugar, but I think it's really important to differentiate whether we're growing plants to increase biodiversity and for conservation, or if we are growing plants for large industrial processes. And some plants are just way better to serve the industrial process and industrial needs that we have on this planet than other plant sources. I also think that looking at food waste byproducts is really important. Um, the experience that I have with this is working with breadfruit. So there's a lot of data behind using the fruit or using the heartwood for skincare products. I definitely did not want to use the fruit because that would be taking away a very important staple um, food source with lots of macro and micronutrients in the communities in which it's grown and I would never want to take a week of food source to serve the cosmetics or skincare industry. In addition, using a material like the heartwood, which is like the innermost part of the trunk, would 
ultimately you would have to like chop down the tree and again that's not renewable using like any part of the trunk of a tree or even branches or roots and often fruits is really not sustainable long term that's why when i found out that the male inflorescences like the flowers were a waste product and they were they just grow they fall on the ground and no one really cares about them they did have a traditional use but it's really not being uh, used anymore in modern society so i thought this was a great opportunity to investigate if those flowers had some bioactive properties for the skin and they did so that's an example of how we can use food crops and use the other parts of the plant that are not being used for food purposes to serve the cosmetics and skincare industry and the another good example of this is like wheat and rice bran so bran is a byproduct of making wheat flour or rice flour and a lot of different products from those two plants and the bran is used but just really not as much so a lot of it does end up going to landfill or for, for animal feed but it is rich in ferulic acid so it is a great source very renewable source to get this very good um, antioxidant for skincare products. I think the whole idea that all natural all the time is super eco-friendly and environmental just really is not the case. It's not that black and white. I think to be as sustainable as we possibly can be, it is going to be adjusting what plant sources we're using from nature, from our environment. Um, that serve multiple purposes in you know our communities and our world and then pairing that with uh, biotechnology and creating these microorganisms that can fill in the rest of those needs of the plants that don't make sense to produce on a commercial scale okay so I did ask you guys on Instagram um, if natural means sustainable in your like in your opinion and 207 people voted for yes 354 voted for no, which means that it's like a 37%, 63% split. So I do want to try this poll again after you guys have seen this video and just see if your opinion has shifted a little bit. I do think that natural products can serve a purpose, but we have to be very mindful and understand that it's not so clear cut and dry. It's not so black and white. There's a lot of gray area with using natural products and how they could be sustainable but often are not very sustainable right now. All right, so that is all I have to say for now on this topic. I probably could go on and on and on and on um, with various examples kind of demonstrating how it's just really not clear cut and dry, but I think you get the picture. So if you do have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, just leave them down in the comments below. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. And I will see you guys in my next video.